outside in the Seattle area, but cozy under the roof of the Kingdome. The usual sellout of near 65,000 to see two teams with real playoff ambitions duel this afternoon. Hello, everyone. Dick Henberg with Merlin Olson. The New England Patriots know now the Jets are going to win. They have a big lead, so they're trying to stay in first place, and the Seattle Seahawks are just one game behind the Denver Broncos who play the San Diego Chargers a bit later, and they're both looking ahead to a, a late-season uh, opportunity. Dick, when you're thinking playoffs, and both these teams are thinking playoffs, you've got to win late in the year. Early in the season, you lose a game, you can make up on it. You can't do that anymore. This game could also play a big role if these teams are fighting for a berth as a wild card later in the season. And in the highly competitive A, AFC 14 teams and 10 of the 14 in the American Conference are either in first place or one game out of first. The Patriots will get the ball first. Norm Johnson to kick it off for Seattle. New England with five consecutive wins under Coach Ray Berry and Seattle trying to win their third in a row. A huge kick that's deep. Stefan starring. Well sit on it in the end zone. Touched back and out comes the Renaissance man as Pete Rosell alluded to Steve Grogan. Tony Collins and Craig James are the running back. Stanley Morgan, the all-time Patriot receiver and catches yards and touchdowns. Irving Fryer, a couple of punt returns for touchdowns. Lynn Dawson is the tight end. The offensive blockers, Brian Holloway and John Hanna, the H team on that left side. Pro Bowlers, veteran Guy Morris at center, Ron Wooten and Steve Moore on the right side. James for only two into a sea of blue Seattle jerseys led by Keith Butler. Here is that Seahawk defense. Jacob Green, he has a couple of touchdowns this year. Joe Nash on the nose from Boston College and Jeff Bryant. The linebackers, Bruce Schultz, Fred Young, a fine young player, Keith Butler and Michael Jackson. Terry Taylor and Dave Brown, the veteran at the corners, and Kenny Easley, an all-pro, and John Harris at safety on second and eight as James picking his way to the 25, where it'll be third and five. Butler, along with John Harris, to make the stop. Right away, this Patriot team comes out and starts pounding on that line for the Seahawks, and one of the reasons for that, the Seahawks have been very aggressive. They have 21 sacks in the last three weeks. They want to remind them of how strong that running game that the Patriots can produce on the line of scrimmage is so that they can keep them out of the pass rush. Tony Collins, Craig James split behind Grogan, and Seattle looking past. They're bringing up the rush, and then they drop back. Gave a false look. Grogan just gets it away. Complete to Lynn Dawson. Fumble. Dawson may have been able to scramble back and get it, but I believe with a fumble, the Patriots lost the chance for a first down. Dawson was struggling to get across the 30 in a first down. With the fumble, the ball drops back to the 29. Two of the most physical defensive players in the NFL on the field today. There's one of them, number 45, Kenny Easley, working on Lynn Dawson. Watch him strip that football. Boy, he just goes after that football, attacks it. The ball bounces away. And in that fumble, they lost first down yardage, Dick. They had the first down, but they lost it with the fumble. So Rich Camarillo, who did his college kicking right here in Seattle at the University of Washington, off to a good start, but his average dipping dramatically the last five games. But those were five New England wins. Kenny Easley and Paul Scancy are deep for Seattle. A beautiful booming kick that'll send Easley all the way back inside his 15. He fumbles and falls on it at the 20. The implications for both teams in their division races. New England currently tied with the Jets and with a 5-0 lead within the division, New England has that advantage. The Jets are going to win. They have a big, big lead over Tampa Bay. Miami apparently will beat Indianapolis. Both teams, uh, Jets and Miami, started slowly. But that in-division record is important. Denver leads by one over Seattle, and it's a real scramble in the West with the Raiders only one game off the lead. All the Western Division teams are playing late games. Seattle and the other four competing in the AFC West. Dave Craig. Kurt Warner for four. Warner, the number seven rusher in the NFL, comes in with a 
722 yards, but he's been slowed in the last three weeks with a bad ankle. It'll be second down and six. We'll give you those lineups in just a moment as Seattle breaks huddle at its 24-yard line. Both Turner and Steve Largent to the right, and that's 89 Byron Walker way out to the near side. Warner, close to a first down, dropped at the 29-yard line by Fred Marion, the AFC Defensive Player of the Week for his efforts last week against Indianapolis. Craig, the quarterback. Warner, Eric Lane, number 37, starting at fullback. Chuck Knox's team has had real problems at that position with injuries. David Hughes and Dan Dornick both out. Darrell Turner with 10 touchdown passes, tops in the NFL. Steve Largent only three away from an NFL record, 50 catches, eight years. Charlie Young, the tight end. Essink, Baylor, Bush, Pratt, and Kreider, an expatriate, at tackle the offensive line. Third and one. Warner three carries in a row and he has the first down as he just edges across the 30 yard line. Let's go to Bob Costas. Nope. We're going to go to uh, welcome the Pittsburgh and Houston audience. How did that final come out? The Oilers and Cleveland Browns. We welcome you and there's that final. The Steelers winning 30 to 7 to maintain at least a share of first place in the Central Division. Cincinnati playing at Los Angeles against the Raiders. Here we're just underway in the King Dome. Three and a half minutes have been played. The Patriots unable to pick up a first down after receiving the opening kickoff. And Kurt Warner, three consecutive runs, a first down, a total of 11 yards, and hits Seattle at their 31. Four straight carries, and he battles for five before 50. Larry McGrew and Steve Nelson, 57, can make the tackle. Ken Sims, Dennis Owens, and Julius Adams, uh, the old man on that front line for the Patriots. Andre Tippett, boy, greatness really surrounding his play. Steve Nelson, despite the eye injury, and he has a special uh, face mask to protect the eye. Larry McGrew and Don Blackman. Blackman would be a star on most teams, but with uh, Tippett in that linebacking court, tough to find him. Lippett, Claiborne, James, and Marion, a good back four for New England. Second and five. Another first down. Kurt Warner, five plays, five rushes by Warner, the former All-America at Penn State. If you want to know why Kurt Warner is regarded by defenses as such a tough back to stop, watch the cuts he makes from the end zone. He sees the opening back inside, runs right out of the grasp of number 50, Larry McGrew, and picks up excellent yardage. This is the quickest I have seen Warner since his knee injury, and he looks to be explosive on the line today. From the 44. Only Warner behind Craig. His first throw, and it goes to Warner. For six yards, a fumble, and the Patriots have recovered. Warner hit at midfield, and the signal was that New England had recovered. One of the officials marked it toward the opposite goal line, but now perhaps the another official is going to say the play had been whistled dead. Now they're trying to separate everything down there. We'll give you a chance to watch it. A little swing pattern. They run Warner several times. They're stretching down the field with the receivers. Warner has the ball here, working against those Patriots who are trying to strip the ball as well, and that was Fred Marion who pulled that ball away, and I believe, Dick, that it was a legitimate fumble. It was, and Jerry Markbright has now signaled first down New England. That's one of the things that Raymond Berry locked out on or locked on as a priority for his defense was taking the ball away. They were 26th in the league last year. This year, they lead the AFC with 30. Seattle, by the way, is there with 29. So both these teams know how to strip that football loose. We've seen it on the ground twice already with fumbles.
Tony Collins. A couple tough yards. Fred Young, number 50, one of the many Seahawks in on the stop. Jeff Bryant, number 77, working on 76. Brian Holloway. Holloway drove him off the line a good five yards. Jeff uh, wanting to get back into that play, able to pick up a piece of the tackle. But boy, that's a battle of two bulls on the line of scrimmage. Cleveland has defeated Buffalo to stay in that Central Division race. Collins pulled off down by Kenny Easley at the 43 after a four-yard gain. Drogan has thrown only one pass, completed to tight end Lynn Dawson, but Dawson fumbled on the play, and the ball falling back inside the 30 and denied the Patriots a first down. They're looking for their initial first down. Kenny Easley said he felt that the key to this game, Dick, was what would happen on first downs. The Seahawks want their nickel package, their extra defensive backs on the field. But if the, if the Patriots are able to run the ball effectively, they can keep that nickel package on the sideline. From the shotgun. The all-out blitz. And Collins may have fumbled. And they have ruled it a fumble. And will mark it at that spot, recovered by New England. But the Patriots will have to punt it away. You'll see on the right-hand side of your screen that Randy Edwards, number 60, 68, blowing in there. That's a draw play. When you run the blitz very often because you're jumping into those gaps, you just kill that draw play. That's a case where the defense had the perfect call for the offensive play. Hog Hanna, number 73, was the man who fell on the football to keep it in New England's possession. Camarillo aiming toward the near corner. No, that one's going to fade and bounce into the end zone. That's not what Camarillo had in mind. So on the net, the Patriots will get only 23 yards. Steve Largent, as he comes on the field, 47 catches. Should he catch three today, he will become the first man in NFL history to catch 50 passes in eight different years. He's currently tied with five, and one of those, Raymond Berry, the New England coach, seven seasons with 50 or more. He undoubtedly will be the first man to catch 600 in a career in less than 12 years, and he's going to do it in 10. And there's more to the Largen story. Warner. 30, 40, and Marion knocks him out of bounds at the 44. Four yards for Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner early in this season has had trouble getting to the hole. He has had trouble exploding, but you saw it. Just a little opening there. But good running backs know how to explode from the line of scrimmage. Warner did it there. Popped through for a big gain and a first down. He is having an exciting day. Six rushes, 47 yards already in this first quarter. Randall Morris will give Warner a breather. Morris 43. That was the longest run against the New England Patriots all season. Eric Lane. And he stopped after just a yard gain. 85 Julius Adams, the 37-year-old graybeard defensive end of the Patriots, made the stop. He said 85, number 85, will end it here in 85, his last season. I talked to Eddie Kayat, his defensive line coach, and Eddie said, you know, this 37-year-old defensive lineman is still one of the quickest off the ball of any of the linemen in the NFL. He said, you know, he can show those guys, and in that first two or three feet, you can make a living. <laughs> and he is something else in great shape, still enjoying the game. Second and nine. Craig Don Blackman records the sack, his eighth of the season. Let's take a peek at Julius Adams on this particular play. He was driving inside to make room for the blitzing linebacker on the outside. Very quickly, number 55, Don Blackman coming from the outside is the man who makes the sack. But you saw how quickly Julius Adams, 85, blew into the inside past number 64, Ron Essing. 35th time this year that Dave Craig has been sacked. Adams a part of the play, although Blackman will receive the sack credit. Out of the shotgun, Craig on third down and 15. Good 
good protection. Open is Largent. And Steve Largent has caught a pass in his 118th consecutive game as he moves ever closer to Harold Carmichael's all-time record of 127 in a row. Magic feet. Largent just has that unique ability to break loose. He gets his man turned around right there. Roland James gets it to the outside. That's Claiborne, Raymond Claiborne, 26, coming up to shove him out of bounds. And he's short of the first down by about, oh, two yards. They're going to have to kick it away. That's unusual for Largent. He usually knows exactly where the marker is. Dave Penzer's first punt. Short. And bounces out of bounds around the 25-yard line. They'll mark it right at the 25. Short kick of 23 by Finzer. Five minutes and nine seconds remaining in this first quarter. Craig and the Seahawks. No They've score. had some trouble this year, too, and you can see one of the problems that Craig has had. He's gotten off to some bad starts, and in the games they've lost, the four games they've lost, has thrown 11 interceptions. But when he is on a streak, he's hard to stop. Nearly perfect. Rogan off play action that's going to be intercepted John Harris at the 49 of Seattle his fifth of the year both of these football teams have tremendous defenses and they can take the football away from you they can win just with defense Turnovers, the name of the game here in Seattle. They get their first of the day, and Grogan is wondering why he lobbed that one over the head of his receiver. That was not a good pass. So each team has a turnover at midfield. New England with a fumble recovery. Kurt Warner at the Seattle 49, and now Harris's interception puts the Seahawks in business just on their side of the 50. interception of the year and we've got some extra pushing and shoving well turnabout is fair play the Seahawks took it away from Grogan and the New England Patriots come right back and steal the ball from Craig Craig trying to get to his speed receiver the deep man they want to stretch the defense the ball is under thrown and Marion timed it beautifully went up over the top Claiborne would have knocked it away had it been even thrown further. And then it's a fine run back. Looks like a running back here. Marion has had a sensational year. Former Miami of Florida star. One of three former Hurricanes. Along with uh, Lester Williams and Ron Lippett, Lippett on the New England club. We'd like to welcome those of you who have been watching the Miami Dolphins and Indianapolis Colts. We're here at the King Dome. Dick Kenberg and Merlin Olsen, the final of the Dolphins, staying within a game of the Jets and New England hoping that with a win that they can stay a game ahead of Miami. But Miami had to rally as did the Jets today from uh, early deficits. Fred Marion has just intercepted a Dave Craig pass for New England, returning it as he gathered his momentum from the goal line out to the 32. And Tony Collins struggles for a couple. Thus far, New England has not been able to establish a running game. All the scores for you, early action. Bears embarrassing the Cowboys in Dallas, 44 to nothing. 34 to 20, Miami, staying within a game of the lead. The Jets, 55-28, had over 40 points at halftime after they fell behind early. Pittsburgh beat Houston, 30 to seven. 24-14, the Eagles are a winner against the Cardinals. Here, no score. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Second down and eight. Collins trying to get outside. John Harris drops him at the 35. Now to NFL 85, Ahmad Rashad. 
All right, Dick. Well, the Chargers starting today at five and five, trying to work their way into the thick of this AFC West. Gary Anderson. Boy, very quickly that former Arkansas All-American showing that he's going to be one of the top backs in this league. Rogan scrambling. And he does not. Now he throws wide open Irving Fryer all the way to the 37 yard line of Seattle and a first down. What a great play by Grogan as he battled for extra time. But Irving Fryer is working one on one on Kenny Easley, number 45. You'll see him break to the inside. Easley's the man that's got to protect him. Fryer gets a little push and then gets away, seeing the quarterback in trouble. He's all alone. And Grogan, I think Grogan made it everyone think he was going to run that football. That quickly stopped and dropped it off to Fryer. Smart play. The old Grogan would have run. But he this, is well a, done. this is a new quarterback, the veteran from Kansas State, who admits that maturity has really worked to his favor, that he's much more sage in his decisions. Rode Craig James, Jesse Craig James, for a yard. Can easily right there to greet him. The Seattle Seahawks defense is very aggressive at the ball at the line of scrimmage. Easily on the blitz on this play, all the way from the backside to get a piece of that tackle on Craig James. One of the things you'll see these Seahawks defenders doing today, you'll see a lot of movement on the line of scrimmage. They know Grogan is calling his own plays and calling his own audibles. They want to give him a lot of different looks. They give him one look, and just before the snap, they'll shift into the real defense. Grogan up top for Fryer. Oh, Fryer had position on Terry Taylor, but couldn't bring it in. I talked to Tom Catlin about his defense, and he said, we know they're going to work on number 20, Terry Taylor, and when we've got Keith Simpson in the game, they'll go after him. These are young players, and they have a tendency to make some mistakes. Fryer working one-on-one -on -one here on Taylor. Taylor is out in front of him, but Fryer backs across his heels here and makes what looked to be an excellent attempt at the ball. Couldn't hang on to it, but that's, that's smart football. Had poor position, just used his jumping ability to get the first shot at the football. Third down eight. Stephen starring and a first down at the 20 yard line. Starring the former quarterback at McNeese State up to spear that one only his sixth catch of the entire season. Here he is in isolation down the sideline very quickly and just breaks to the outside once again working on number 20 Terry Taylor. And starring had to spear that one out of the sky. They really have some great athletes on this New England team both on offense and on defense. I think that's something you'll see a great deal of today. Raw athletic talent. Deepest drive by either team in this initial quarter. Less than two minutes remaining. They ran away from the strong side to James, but only for a couple. James, who started today with 695 yards rushing, he was number eight in the league behind Kurt Warner. Atlanta has upset the Rams. The Rams off to an 8-0 start, have now lost three in a row. And Cleveland rallies to beat the Bills 17-7. Green Bay, big over New Orleans. Trebles continue for Bum Phillips' team. San Diego with the opening kickoff return by Gary Anderson. 98 yards to lead at Denver 7-0. Kansas City and the 49ers tied at three at Candlestick. The Raiders take the early lead against Boomer Esiason and the Bengals down in Los Angeles. And Detroit jumps out to a two-touchdown lead against Minnesota in the first quarter. You're up to date. A draw play to James. A tough runner inside, and he's inside the 10. It'll be very close to a first down. James are those happy feet. He has an unusual running style, has a hesitation kind of style in there, but really does a great job of finding the opening. On this play, they caught the Seahawks in, a, in an all-out attempt to rush the passer. They crossed them up. Second and eight, they ran the football. And, of course, James was into the secondary before anyone had a chance to touch him. They're going to measure for the first down. So it'll either be first and goal or third and inches. New England trying to do something that they have not been very successful at this year. That is scoring in the first quarter. It has been a troublesome spot for Raymond Berry's team, even in victory. And he says, sooner or later, that's going to bite us if we can't put the ball into the end zone in that first period. 
he said we're going to find a game plan for the first quarter eventually he said i haven't found it because i don't know what it is well if they can get this one in they certainly can get off on the right foot here it's a long drought in the first quarter but they have a chance with the clock ticking 47 46 seconds remaining first period third and inches fighting the noise of the kingdom grogan Brogan vaulting forward for the first down. Right over the back of center Guy Morris. It's first and goal, and that may well be the last play of the quarter. You notice that there was no hesitation on Grogan's part. Even with all that noise, he's going to run the play. I asked him, will that bother you? He said, sure, it'll bother us. But he said, we're not going to let the crowd dictate if we're going to run a play or not. Even if we have to go without a snap count, and they're prepared to do it today. Watching his lips, I don't think he called one. He just waited. When the snap came, he just went over the top of his center. Three all. Cincinnati has kicked a field goal in Los Angeles. And the final seconds being erased on the giant scoreboard here in Seattle. And that's it. The first period is history. New England and Seattle battling for a first place spot. To look at the New England scoring story under Grogan. Three points and shut out today. 26 in the second, 20 in the third. But that fourth quarter, he's been brilliant. Almost flawless play in that final period. That's so unlike the old Steve Grogan. It was said at one time, if Grogan gets a hot start, look out. If he gets off badly, he gets himself down. He gets down on himself, and he'll start to make the mistakes. Well, he has certainly matured. I think sitting out those 18 games and watching and saying, now what would I have done if I'd had a chance to be in there really helped him. First and goal as we open the second quarter. Scoreless game here in Seattle. Irving Fryer untouched. And New England leads six to nothing. Beautiful block by big John Hanna. And what the Patriots are doing here is taking advantage of one of the strengths of the Seattle defense. They pursue so quickly. They just simply show them a little movement out to the right, reverse the ball back to Fryer. That's his seventh run on a reverse this year. Little fake inside to the two backs. James going in. And here comes Fryer. Now watch 73. The block by Hanna right there. Knocked Jacob Green off on the play and into the end zone untouched goes Fryer. Tony Franklin to try the point after. He has not missed as a Patriot and he's right down the middle with that one. Irving Fryer's seventh touchdown of the year gives New England the lead. Seattle, Washington, where it's cold and rainy and snowing in parts of the metropolitan area today. Glad we are indoors. Rarely do we ever utter those words. Tony Franklin's kick is very short toward the sidelines and will go out of bounds and with it a five yard penalty and that gives us a chance to go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Dickin, Dick Watson for a four yard touchdown. The extra point is good. In the first quarter, they're all tied at 7-7. Ahmad Rashad, he learned that from Fran Tarkenton, nifty. <laughs> <laughs> Does he use that target and roll, turn his back on you every now and again? This New England team has had problems on the kickoffs, Dick. Tony Franklin has not been able to kick the ball consistently deep on the kickoffs. They had an operation. He had an operation on his plant foot during the offseason, his plant leg. They felt that that would give him more power. It simply hasn't happened. They're trying to kick to positions on the field. But boy, I'll tell you, when you can't get that ball deep, when you give a receiving team, a return team, a chance to start up field, you give the opposing offense a big boost. Paul Scancy will edge up to about the five yard line. And Seattle should have a good shot at a decent return here. The kick is driven, but low, taken by Randall Morris at the 20. What you were talking about, Merlin. It's a low line drive kick. It's impossible to get down there and cover it. You've got to get the hang time. Scancy up to block, but Morris doesn't need much. And Tony Franklin really makes a saving play here. Throws his body in there. And if Randall Morris had jumped to the inside instead of the outside, he'd still be running. 
58 yards on the return, the longest against the Patriots this year. Movement on the right side of the line for Seattle. That was uh, Dan Ross, the veteran tight end. Rusty Tillman, the man who is, coaches these special Full teams. Full start, number 78, offense. Now Bob First Kreider down. and Ross both moving, and Kreider, the tackle, picks up the penalty. There's Chick Harris on the sideline. He'll be signaling the plays into Dave Craig. Uh, Chuck Knox standing there to have his input. Ray Prohaska is the offensive coordinator. Rod Rust will signal in the defense for the Patriots. Those men matching wits on the two sidelines. The reason why you didn't see Chick Harris signaling in there is they're using the same play as was called before the penalty. It's Kurt Warner. Big hole. 30. 25. A first down at the 20. Big gains from the running game of the Seattle Seahawks almost non-existent during 1985. Well, here in a passing situation, <laughs> Warner gets downfield, gets very close, in fact, picks up the first down. Roland James made the tackle after a 20-yard gain. That's 67 yards. Steve Largent, wide receiver. He also... Just enough of a push on Raymond Claiborne to help his runner get a couple more. First down at the Patriots 20. Warner again. Fall down for a yard loss as Kenneth Sims with a long arm of the Texas law there to drag him down from behind. Very physical player. Had some injury problems and I think some attitude problems when he first came into the league. Uh, they banged his head a few times. Gave him a chance to finally grow into the role as number one draft pick and hero on that defensive line and he has responded admirably in this season. Second down. Close to 11. Well, Warner has been the workman and pays the price as he gets just to the 19 yard line. Larry McGrew from Southern California where he starred in two Rose Bowl wins for the Trojans. They still have a minute left. New York Jets 62, Tampa Bay 28. Ken O'Brien, the ever-improving quarterback of the Jets, has thrown for five touchdowns. They had 41 points at halftime for an all-time New York Jets record after they fell behind early 14 to nothing. Third and about eight and a half. For Largent. And Largent unable to come up with a one-handed catch. Craig throwing under pressure as Andre Tippett and rookie Garen Varis were on top of the Seattle quarterback as he threw. Two wide receivers to the same side. Largent will go all the way to the inside. Actually get knocked off his feet, but he never gives up on the pattern. I tell you, that is that's an interesting play. How many wide receivers will get up off the ground and get back into the pattern? Largen does. Norm Johnson, who has not had a good kicking year, and they have changed holders here in Seattle. That's Gail Gilbert, the backup quarterback, to spot the ball. It is no good. Just wide to the right. From 37 yards, Norm Johnson fails, and the score remains seven. Still a 500 kicker. The holder Gilbert said, oh, not quite, just to the right. One of the things that you could see in that picture is that the strings were not directly toward the goalpost. They were to the right, and that sometimes will pull the ball slightly to the right. Pro Bowl kicker last year when he missed only four of 24. This year he's missed eight of 16. Tony Collins breaking into the secondary fumbles, and Seattle has recovered. Keith Butler. The second turnover of the day for this Seattle defense. They were able to get an interception earlier. Collins upfield. That's easily stripping at that ball again. And 
He is interesting. First man in. He didn't even go for the man. He went for the ball and stripped it away. We've seen that on every easily tackle. He goes right for the ball, and it pays off. Raymond Berry's Patriots have given up the ball twice. They've given up more than any team in the NFL 30 times prior to today, but they've taken it away 30. And it's 2-2 two and two in the first half this afternoon. Seattle with a great chance to tie. Ball at the 27. Warner slowed down by Nelson. And then plenty of help in the middle. Three yards for Kurt Warner, who's had a big first half. He's around 70 yards. Steve Nelson, a wily veteran on the inside, back after that eye injury last week. He'll be coming on the blitz. And you'll notice if you can see the flash off the front of his helmet, they're wearing a special protective mask that just is like a motorcycle helmet, actually. It just protects that eye. Hypothemia, I think, is what he had. He actually got hit with a football in the eye during a drill. The pressure increased in that eye to where it was very dangerous. They kept him in the hospital the first week, and finally he's out practicing this last week. Craig batted in the air, incomplete. It'll be third and eight. Hugh Green of the Buccaneers, when he was with Tampa Bay, used the same device, and that's where uh, New England sought uh, assistance in, in that uh, protective helmet. And uh, Steve McMichael of the Chicago Bears, the defensive lineman, also wears that. Well, it's finally over for Tampa Bay. Their hopes uh, very much in blushing uh, bloom at 14 nothing early, and then, boy, did it wilt like the weather. It was a wintry second half, 62-28. You think Joe Walton would like to bank a few of those points? Against New England next Sunday is the date at Giant Stadium. Big third and eight. Craig, plenty of time. Larkin. Does he have the first down? Yes, he does. At the 15, Roland James made the tackle. A match of great talents. One on one with Raymond Claiborne. And he's as good a, at this kind of coverage as anybody around. Gets Largen inside. Look at that little move just to freeze Claiborne for a second. And then Largen is out. Roland James coming up. And you notice using his shoulders instead of his arms. He's got a, a dislocated finger on his right hand. He's wearing a cast on it. But that's going to make it tough for him to tackle today. 49 catches now in the season for Largen. One away from an NFL record. Warner. A couple of yards on first down, and almost a late hit by the Patriots. Garen Varis, a little late getting in. Steve Nelson, the primary hitter. Varis, they like the way he's developed. He's from Stanford, a second-round pick. Played his high school ball in Ohio, and he has five sacks. He, he'll go in for Julius Adams in pass situations. He was a weight man, track man at Stanford, and hasn't really bulked up like they want him to. He's putting on pounds, working hard on the weight program, but when he gets another 10 pounds on him, look out. Less than 11 minutes remaining in the first half. 7 nothing New England. Craig, all day, Warner... Draws a crowd at the 14-yard line. And that'll be a gain of only a yard, maybe a loss. This Patriot team certainly playing outstanding defense on the year, ranked fourth in the NFL. And here are the three top tacklers. Steve Nelson, their leader. And in spite of missing that game last week, still a top tackler with 86 coming into the game. Fred Marion, of course, a tough safety. You've seen what he can do in this game already. And Larry McGrew, Dick, I think this linebacking crew for the Patriots is the strongest overall in the NFL. That's an interesting comment. They've got good depth as well. Rembert filled in neatly for Nelson last week. Third down and nine. Craig turned around. What a job he did, and then throws the ball away in the end zone. And Norm Johnson in the field goal unit will be on. But Craig saved the sack with his... Uh, nimble footwork well actually with hand work got one hand on the ground which he's allowed to do last week against new orleans on a couple of occasions he was fighting his way out of traffic and actually tripped and fell and he was very angry at himself so i i think that's uh, a chance for him to get back and have a good play in that direction threw it away obviously norm johnson will get another chance and gosh you really feel that these seahawks need to have him back on track here in the late part of the season. A 32-yard attempt. He's got it. 
So two trips deep into New England territory for Seattle, but only three points for Chuck Knox. Into three, New England. They've been watching the sidelines all season long and pointing out those guys with the signals. Do you ever try to steal any of those? <laughs> oh, not me, but I know that Chuck Knox is famous for that. Other coaches around the league know that he has people watching the signals. And there are things you try and find out. For example, if you can break the signals for a defense, you know when they're blitzing. Very important. And for an offense, you'd like to know whether they're running or going to pass. Then you can alter your defenses quickly to that regard. Well, you might see a man high in the sky with the binoculars to see if they can pick up that information. And indeed, uh, you had a story, a personal story involving signal, something you picked up as a player of the Rams. Deep kick by Johnson. Stefan Starring. Captain of by all name team in the NFL, starring is to the 19-yard line. Other scores of the late action today. San Diego, 14, Denver 7 in the second at Mile High Stadium. 10 to 3, the 49ers lead Kansas City. Cincinnati and the Raiders are tied at three in the second. And here it's 7 to 3, New England. One other game, Detroit leading Minnesota 14 to nothing in the last report. Rogan passing on first down. Oh, what a catch by Irving Fryer. Falling to the outside and nailing that one for a nine-yard game. Fryer, the number one player picked a year ago in the draft out of Nebraska, and he is really living up to his star potential this season. Had injuries last year, an exciting rookie, even when he first stepped on the field. Injured his ribs in a preseason game of Washington, and that slowed him down. When he finally got back, then he hurt his shoulder. So he is just getting a chance to pay off as a dividend here in 1985. Second and one. Rogan. Complete. 83, Cedric Jones. His 12th catch of the season. Jones, part of a very talented receiving core for New England, has 15 yards before Easley can wrap him up. One of the interesting things about Steve Grogan's return to the lineup is that he has had some elbow problems, some tendonitis. It's only allowed him to practice really and throw the football twice during the week on Thursday and Friday. Doesn't seem to be bothering his accuracy, however. Grogan, one time better known for his scrambling talents than his uh, accuracy of arm. Craig James into the clear. And he's all the way to the Seattle 39-yard line. James ripping off a big gain of 17 yards. Watch the hesitation by James. First, the little step to the outside, a counter step. Now watch him. He just kind of hovered there for a second and then waited till that hole opened, giving his blockers a chance to set it up. When it was there, he exploded through it. Big gain. That's the kind of play that these Patriots would like to get going here. They would like to start dominating on the line of scrimmage. They have a big weight advantage in that offensive line. They're starting to use it. First down at the 38. Seven to three New England leads. Tony Collins wrapped up on a fine tackle. Michael Jackson, the linebacker from the University of Washington. Well, let's go to the sideline, see if we can pick up some of those signals. Well, you won't have many signals coming in when Grogan's on the field, of course, Dick. He's calling his own plays. The last time he did that, back in 79 and 80 under Ron Earhart. But as he's calling his plays, here are the signals coming in from Tom Catlin. Catlin, of course, the defensive coordinator for the Seahawks. Been with Chuck Knox for many, many years in Los Angeles and Buffalo. One of the smart defensive coordinators. One of the smartest, in fact, in the NFL. Second and nine. Inside handoff and nothing there for Craig James. It'll be third and long as we go long distance to Ahmad. All right, Dick and Dim. San Diego leads 14 to 7 in the second quarter. When was that that Commissioner Roselle he referred to the refrigerator William Perry and he called uh, Lionel James the ice cube? <laughs> <laughs> Great game last week for James. Comes right back today. Meanwhile, in the noise of the kingdom, third and long. Brogan going for it all. An open man. Stefan Starring had two steps on the Seattle defense and Grogan's arm a little too strong. Oh, he could taste six on that one. Working on Terry Jackson, number 24, and he broke deep. 
Grogan getting excellent protection on that play. And when you can get the running game to go, when you can establish some kind of running game, you force the defensive lineman to think about the run, slows down that first step, and usually gives you more time to throw the football. Apparently out of Tony Franklin's range, it would be about a 50 four-yard attempt, so Camarillo will try to pin Seattle deep in its own end with a punt. That's going to go easily into the end zone. Camarillo not angling well at all, so the Seahawks will get it at the 20-yard line. The net for Camarillo, not good. Potter of Kurt Warner, and a big year for him, able to return from that serious knee surgery of last season. Right at the end of this play, several bodies stacked up on that right ankle of Kurt Warner. That's the one that's been injured the last three weeks, and he's trying to shake it off on the sideline now. Second and 15. Guns it to Byron Walker. Is it a catch? Apparently, yes, at the 27-yard line. Shy of the first down. 12 yards for Walker. Craig throwing that ball low as the defenders were in behind Walker. It looked like that ball dangerously close to the ground. Walker doing a good job of getting down to scoop it up. Number 42, Ronnie Lippett there to pounce on him and close it down. But it's going to be third and about four yards to go. There's what's happened to the Seattle Seahawks. They've not had the ball more than six plays on their previous five possessions. So they're trying to st sustain something for the first time in the half. Whoops. Ken Sims. <laughs> A bit premature. And what do you do when you're in there that early? You point at someone. Well, and I'll tell you what else you do. If you're Dave Craig, you get to the ground in a hurry. I mean, <laughs> Sims almost got there when the football was there. You don't mind him coming to dinner, but not quite that fast. Now watch Craig. He looks Outside. up and he says, hey, what Number is this? 77. Watch him go to the defense. ground there. And Eric Lane First over down. to try and protect him. No one apparently moved on the Seattle line of scrimmage. So Sims gets a five-yard penalty. And, of course, the Seattle Seahawks pick up a first down. Earned the name, uh, nickname Game Day because he prefers Sundays over those work days in the middle of the week. Well, I don't blame him for that. I hated those <laughs> practices, too. So, first down on the penalty for Seattle. Trailing 7-3. to three. Dumps it off to Randall Morris. Fumble! It goes out of bounds or does it? Out of bounds and Seattle maintains control. Raymond Claiborne very close to recovering for New England. A big break for the Seattle Seahawks. That ball popped loose. Boy, we've seen shaking tackles today. The ball stripped away again here. Randall Morris, that's Roland James, 38 up on him. Roland put his helmet on the football. Now that ball needs to be possessed by the New England Patriots. They've got to get their hands on it and get it in possession. You saw, unfortunately, the juggling of the ball as the body was out of bounds. Seahawks dodge it there. The veteran Claiborne, though, realizing he had to do something to stay in bounds, did all he could to try to cover it. Second and eight. Morris to the 438-yard line. I'd like to go back to the previous play in Roland James. Here's Roland James, a man who has suffered a knee injury last uh, week on a crack back block by Wayne Capers, was so mad he swung and hit Capers, hit him in the helmet, and not only fractured his index finger, it went right through the skin, the compound fracture. Here he is playing today, and he just made that vicious hit. Mm. If you can imagine dislocating the top joint of your index finger and the pain that goes with it, knock the, knock the uh, fingernail right off. I mean, it just, you had to push that back down and tape it down. Oof. Third down and eight. No, third down and three. And incomplete to the Paul Scancy 82. And Craig, here's the Boo Birds. He's not, amazingly, despite the fact that he was second only to Marino, in touchdown passes last year. He's number one in the NFL this year with 20 touchdown passes, and still they're eager to boo him in Seattle. Dave Fenzer to punt. Dangerous. Irving Fryer back at the 21-yard line for New England. He has taken two back for scores. Hang time, the secret here. He's got to get it up in the air. Short. Fryer. No fair catch. 
Oh, and he was one man away from turning that one to the near sidelines. Good saving tackle by the special teams of Seattle. Second year man Fred Young who has taken over the inside linebacking job from Sheldon Robinson leading the Seahawks through the first 10 games and tackles. Kenny Easley from a safety position. Keith Butler the other inside man right there with Young who's a superb athlete made the Pro Bowl as a special teamer last year. After a 32 yard punt minus two on the return by Fryer. Rogan sets up Shaft at his own 28 leading seven to three. With 3.29 left in the first half, Tony Collins ran into his own blocker, and then he's secured by Young. Bruce Schultz there as well. Stanley Morgan with a hamstring on the sidelines, the all-time receiver for the Patriots. That's why we're seeing Cedric Jones and Stefan Starring. Don't know how serious that is, but he's not played since the first period. The all-time NFL leader in yards per catch, Paul Warfield and Bullet Bob Hayes, the only other two men over 20-yard average. Collins on a draw play and very close to breaking that one for a long gain. Young got him around the ankles after about a five-yard carry. We talked about Fred Young. Outstanding linebacker, a youngster in there though. He's having some, he's having some adjustment problems in a sense that if you show him new reads, he has a little trouble adjusting. But boy, he has a great nose for the football, and you can always find him where the action is. Third and five. Oops. No play. 67. The house. Steve Moore. Pulling back and perhaps the noise contributing to his not hearing the snap count. Full start, number 67, offense, third down. You see the feet moving at the top. They belong to the house. And I talked to John Hanna. He said, you know, we've, we've decided to rename the house. He said, houses are stationary. We want them to move. We're going to call them the mobile home. <laughs> <laughs> He's the man that they'll put in the backfield on occasion, a la the refrigerator. He says he's trying to get up to 300 pounds so he can gain more notoriety. He's only 295. Well, I think he said he was 298 today. I talked to him before the game, so he's gaining on it. On third and 10, the time is for the two-minute warning. Two minutes remaining in the first half in Seattle, where New England leads 7-3. Represents New England's record on the year, seven wins and three losses. And seven also important in that seven is their longest winning streak in history. They come into this game with five in a row. Two minutes remaining, first half, out of the shotgun, third and ten. Open, Stefan starring for the injured Stanley Morgan, and he has a first down at the 41. 14 yards for starring. Starring working again on Terry Taylor on the outside, number 20, gets him one on one, gives him a look deep, and then watch him break the pattern off right there. So hard, actually turned him around. Grogan able to pick him out and get him the football. First down. Also stopped the clock. 153 left. Detroit a big first half against the Vikings. Over the middle of the tight end and Kenny Easley breaks it up. Derek Ramsey has been the forgotten man in this New England season. Ramsey number 88 out of Kentucky last year caught 66 passes for a New England record this year. They've used him only 17 times. 7-3 with a minute 49 left in the half. The Patriots look at second and 10 from their 41. Fryer near side. Cedric Jones to the far side. Fryer was open with the pass behind him at the Seattle 43. Some heat on Grogan. I'll tell you one thing about Steve Grogan. He'll stand in there until the last possible second and take the crack. He'll take that shot just to get the pass away. In fact, talking to Joe Klecko of the New York Jets, he said, we hit Grogan so hard, we crushed him, but we thought he would never get off the ground. He bounced right, right back up, called another pass play, <laughs> and threw it down for a completion. He is one tough quarterback. Third and 10. Out he goes, 
in the grasp of Joe Nash. A flag is also down. Nash, a free agent out of Boston College. You know, the Patriots through the years have taken more players from Boston College, 15, than any other college or university, but they didn't pick Nash. No one did, and Seattle found themselves an all-pro at nose tackle in that man, but penalty against Seattle. Offside, number 22, defense, third Dave down. Brown, the cornerback, was offside. Watch the big stunt going on inside. They're going to take Bryant and bring him all the way to the inside, and Nash is going to run around all the way to the outside. Backers are blitzing to the inside, and of course they end up getting great pressure on Grogan here. There's the play to the outside. It's Nash going all the way back out around. They do a good job of picking it up, but there he is to get a piece of the tackle. But Dave Brown, the cornerback, lined up on the scrimmage line, was offside, so another chance for Grogan on third and five. Incomplete, intended for Fryer, and Kenny Easley was right there for Seattle. So with a minute 35 left, Seattle will have some time. All their timeouts remain to try to take the lead before the intermission. Dangerously close to a reception. Easley makes a good reaction to cover some distance here. He's got to get outside on Fryer, and he didn't get there in time to stop that pass. Fryer just couldn't hang on to it as Grogan was able to get it off into an area where Easley couldn't touch it. Paul Scancy will return for Seattle. He's back at the 10. They've been coming after Camarillo, and they have 10 men on the line of scrimmage this time. Scancy will return it. 15. 25. 40. And down at the 45, the former Husky, uh, University of Washington, Paul Scancy, with a superb return. You win your defense plays big games and that's been the Patriots story last five games they've allowed an average of less than 12 points per game to their opponents almost cut that 22.6 in the half and of course during that period of time have made so many big plays on defense and number 56 on the left hand side of your screen Andre Tippett a very big part of that story but has been strangely silent so far in this game we have not seen him making the kind of plays that he has been making throughout the season Keep an eye on him, see what's going on, what they're doing to slow him down in there. 32 yard punt returned by Scancy. The two big plays for Seattle have been kick returns in this half. Craig has a man open. Eric Lane out of bounds at the New England 45 yard line. That stops the clock with a minute 17 seconds left in the half. Ron Essink, number 64, the left tackle. Apparently. Knocked down on that play. Looks like he's got a hold of his left hand. Now, right hand. He'll go to the sideline for a play, perhaps. Ryan Millard probably will be in his place on that left-hand side. The doctors. Jim Weitzel, a trainer, over quickly to take a look at him. Craig, a rather quiet first half throwing the football. First down. And he threw that one away. Lane covered by Don Blackman and Tippett was applying the pressure that time. Andre Tippett so powerful and quick. You see him coming from a three point stance in that situation. Two men trying to block him. He simply ran out of time. He was blowing through it gotten away from both of those blockers. Boy he is explosive. Maybe that's why we haven't uh, heard much from them. They're putting two men on him. Oh, you better believe that if he was on the other side of the line and I was responsible I'd have at least two guys on him. A minute 12 seconds left in the first half. Seattle second and 10 from the Patriot 45. Four wide receivers for the Hawks. Incomplete. Marion was covering Steve Largent. Dave Craig from Little Milton, Wisconsin College. Dave Craig, of course, taking the snap in the shotgun. We'll get the pressure from the left-hand side. Just go ahead and roll it. We'll see it coming in from the outside here. They run a stunt out there, and Tippett's coming inside. Kreider there to meet him. They were able to get good protection for Craig. He simply overthrew the pass. Turner and Largent both to the right. Walker and Scancy to the left, third and ten. For large. 
collision. He's got it out of bounds, complete at the 26-yard line. And that is a new NFL record. Steve Largent becomes the only man in history to have eight years of catching 50 or more passes. Remarkable. Largent. Excuse me, Dick. Largent is just a master. You see him cutting across the heels and gets Rod McSwain 23 to turn. That's such a great secret for him to get those defensive backs to do what he wants them to do. He just forces them to make a turn, get out of position, and then quickly back into the pattern. He varies his patterns all the time. It's hard to figure out where he's going, but he knows, and Craig knows. And Raymond Berry appreciates. He's part of the Admiration Society. He, in fact, Raymond Berry likens uh, this young man, his talents, to what Berry used in his great year. One was that they both had 50 catches or more in seven seasons, as did Art Powell with the Titans and the Raiders, Lance Allworth, and Charlie Taylor. Now only Steve Largent, the sole receiver to catch 50 in eight different years. Only his 10th season in the league. Eight times with 50 catches or more. One of the things that jumps out in similarity between those two men is how hard they worked to utilize their talent. Both spent long hours, spent long hours, and Largent still spending those hours, to work with his quarterback after practice. You'll see him the last man off the field more than once a week. Meanwhile, Seattle in position to take the lead before halftime, exactly a minute remaining. From the 26 of New England, Craig going deep for Turner. Nicely covered by Rod McSwain. It was a third round pick of the Atlanta Falcons last year and uh, Falcons decided they didn't need him. So New England went after him and picked him off for a number eight draft choice and a good fifth defensive back. Certainly did a great job on Turner in that situation. Turner leading the NFL with ten receptions on uh, touch four touchdowns. Of course, uh, anytime they can try and get him deep, he's a danger to catch that football and put some points on the board. 55 seconds left in the half, second and 10. Craig in trouble. And down he goes from behind. Garen Veris, his sixth sack of the year, the rookie from Stanford, and time called by the Seahawks to stop the clock at the 48 second mark. John Borchard is in there. We talked about Essing being injured and it's Essing or it's Borchard's man Veras who gets up off the ground and it's hard to blame a young uh, offensive lineman for that because Craig just simply took too long and actually was trying to run out of there when Veras caught his heels. It'll be a loss of about eight yards in the play and there are the top sack masters for the Pats. Tippett with ten among the leaders. Blackman with eight including one today and Veris's count up to six with Kenneth Sims five. They lead the AFC. Well Andre Tippett leads the AFC or led coming into today but uh, so far today he has been shut out of the sack department. Tippett last year had eighteen and a half second only to Mark Gastineau's twenty two. There's Andre, a uh, black belt in karate. Boy, well, he's a big linebacker. I have to believe that that really helps him, too, in his pass rush. He knows how to use leverage so well. Knows how to use a man's strength against him. You notice how he has his uh, sleeves tied up there. When you get in and you're rushing, these offensive linemen grab everything they can get a hold of. Well, Tippett doesn't want to give him any cloth there on the sleeves. I thought that was just to show off those huge biceps. Big play for both clubs, third and 18. And a flag down before the snap. That usually means illegal motion. He had someone off before the ball. Might have been Bob Kreider, the right tackle. I think maybe Largent, too. Number 80 was moving. Full start. What's the number? Well, we can't hear. Maybe he wants to ask us. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Full Martin. start, number 78, offense, third down. It was crap. That's like the kid in the Christmas pageant who then says the wrong line and covers his mouth. Mark Bright didn't know his microphone was on. What's well, the number? Better to have it right That's than to right. have it wrong. Bob Kreider, of course, a former Patriot himself, traded here to Seattle, has become a fixture for the Seahawks, battling against his own teammates. And next to him, Robert Pratt, who's back in the lineup. He's played against these uh, Patriots many times. Of course, uh, came here from the Baltimore Colts, the then Baltimore Colts. 
Third and long for Dave Craig from a crowd. Looks for Largent, can't find him at the 28. They're going to give him a reception, Dick. Claiborne on the coverage. They're going to give him a no, reception. No, 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 They did not have possession of the ball. That's, that's exactly right, but the official who called it first was looking at his feet, and the call was based on what happened to Largent's feet. Now, the pass right here. Largent is knocked out of bounds. Out of the ball when he landed out of bounds. Ruled incomplete. Okay, then they're exactly right. But right here, you get the ruling because he's pushed out of bounds. The official who made the call could not see what happened at the end of the play. In they, fact, even our camera angle, it was yes, tough to see the ball for free. Obscured, but another official quickly in to help with the call, and that's good. It's good to see them work as a team that way. Well, we've had the big scoring games in the, in the short side of that. The field goal battle down in Los Angeles between the Bengals and Raiders. In contrast to that Jets Tampa Bay game. Beautiful kick by Fenzer, but it goes into the end zone. And with it, a touchback for the Patriots. And 31 seconds remain for Raymond Berry's Patriots. They have their timeouts left, at least two of them. Will they try to go for an addition to that 7 3 lead? We'll have all the scores, the outstanding plays of the day. You can almost do an NFL 85 on the Jets offense alone. <laughs> and the Bears. And defense. a part of a highlight, no question about it. Raymond Berry, the praise of this man's leadership growing each week. A lot of folks, because of his taciturn demeanor, wondering, well, this bear, what's he do anyway? Well, what he does is build confidence in his team, and they really love him as a man and as a leader. He wants them to take credit. He will not take a chance here on the road with a 7-3 lead, content to run out the clock, and so will Chuck Knox. So with 20 seconds left, both teams are already on their way to the locker room. That might be a new record. Steve Grogan will be in the locker room before the gun sounds ending the first half. Now it's official. Raymond Berry looking for the Patriots' sixth consecutive win, has a 7-3 lead, and it's certainly tough here in Seattle to beat the Seahawks as uh, many have learned to three New England with a win would move back into a tie sharing first place with the New York Jets a team they'll play next Sunday and of course uh, here in Seattle every time a Denver San Diego scores an ounce and San Diego leads they cheer because they're hoping for a Seattle win and a Denver loss that would vault the Seahawks into a tie for first place. right back in the thick of it wouldn't it no. well the one uh, touchdown we had of the first half we now can show you the reverse by Irving Fryer on first and goal at the eight an interesting call very interesting call and again taking it advantage of the quick reactions of that Seattle defense. You'll see the block again by John Hanna. It was critical in that situation, freeing up Irving Fryer to use his speed and, of course, get himself into the end zone. One of the few offensive highlights that we had in this first half. Most everything dominated by the defenses. And uh, almost dangerously close to being covered by New England. That's a free ball. Seattle finally pounces on it at the 23-yard line. Seattle let a kick bounce like that early in the game, and it went out of bounds. But you can't afford to make a mistake like that. You've got to get your body on that football. Seahawks get their first chance here in the second half. I'm sure they've had a chance to talk some strategy, look at what this uh, New England defense is doing. And while they're lining up, let's look quickly at the yardage. And 154 yards for the Patriots, 129 for the Seahawks. Not an impressive stat, certainly. Turnovers even at two in the first half. And time of possession. So it was as even as the score would reflect. Only one touchdown that by New England. Craig over the middle to Eric Lane, who was smothered by Steve Nelson after a gain of about uh, seven. Dick, one of the things you have to admire about Chuck Knox and his staff, they have had a lot of problems, a lot of player problems this year. Losing Hughes and Dornick, their two, their number one and number two fullbacks. And they've got to go to a guy who's who's really a special teams player, Eric Lane. But Knox said something interesting. He said at least he knows who to get and how to get him and has responded when we've given him the opportunity. And that's typical of Knox teams. Lane only 195 pounds, so he'd have to be the lightest fullback in the league starting today. Craig under pressure trying to dump it off to Warner. That's the good news that Warner's back in the lineup, but the bad news is they misconnect as Craig was being hit around the ankles as he delivered the ball. Andre Tippett 
We wondered uh, what had been happening to Tippett. Well, his presence felt instantly here in the second half. Watch him. That's Robert Pratt, 61, trying to pick him up. And he just blows over the top of Pratt and goes right into Craig's legs. Craig smartly getting rid of that football out of bounds, saves the sack. Third down and seven. Tippett and Lippett side by side on the left side for New England. Craig has a man open. Paul Scancy, first down at the 37. Roland James with a solid hit, but a 12 yard gain for the Hawks. The protection that time by the Seattle offensive line, not as big as that huge line for the Patriots we mentioned earlier. And of course, they've been hurt, uh, although Essink is back in the ballgame here in the second half. He left uh, toward the end of the third quarter. That's good news for the Seahawks. Largent to the left on first down. Warner for about five. We ask about Kurt Warner's ankle. He gives us a quick answer. Good quickness on that play as he exploded. And that was similar to the kinds of plays he got off with in the first series today. Had some excellent runs in that first series. And there you see the cutting ability, that, that staggering, wavering kind of look there. So difficult for a defense to set up on a back who can move so quickly from left to right. Four yards make it second and six. And he's got 73 yards for the afternoon. tough for him. He's called upon to do a lot of blocking and while Lane has been a star on the special teams in fact the co-captain in a role that he's not totally uh, familiar. He a halfback when used before third behind Warner and Randall Morris. You mentioned the yardage for Warner. He's averaged 5.8 yards per carry so he's had an excellent average on the day. Craig James 4.9 per carry on the day. Sure interception. And I think a good part of maturity for a quarterback is knowing when he's got to get rid of that football, not taking the sack, just simply putting it out of bounds or eating it if he has to, rather than take the risks. Finzer to punt. Irving Fryer, second only to Lewis Lips of Pittsburgh. Both men return yardage. They both have two touchdowns returned this year. Another short kick. Oh, he's a gambler. What a great play by Irving Fryer. Getting that ball at the last second and picking up every yard pop. It's just under 65,000 here in Seattle. They haven't had a lot to yell about when uh, Seahawks have had the ball. 7-3 New England. They start from the 36 after a 30-yard punt by Fenzer. Grogan and his receiver, Cedric Jones, was not looking. He had looked off the defense and then tried to whirl and fire to the crossing wide receiver Jones. It'll be second and ten. Check this. New England offensive line is really contained an explosive defensive line. Give you an idea of what this uh, Seahawk defensive line did last week. Bryant had two sacks. Jacob Green had a 19 yard touchdown for an interception. And Nash had a sack and a blocked field goal. They have not really been that impressive here today. And will there be a flag? No. The referee, Mark Bright, his responsibility is to protect the quarterback, so his back is turned to the play. And while indeed Grogan may have just dumped that off, Mark Bright was not in a position to see it, but he was in the right position. He's got to do some good play acting on that, and he certainly did it. That was Jeff Bryant getting around Holloway on that play. It looked like uh, Grogan, again, setting very deep, and that's something that he does that can get him in trouble, is get way back there so that those offensive tackles, even if they push that defensive end around, can't get them back behind the quarterback. We saw the scores of all the other late games today, and here it's 7-3. to three. Third and 10. 
Rogan has a man. No, he doesn't. Fryer was open, but he overshot him down at the 45. And there's one of the reasons why the pass is too long. The pressure. Oh, New England will have to punt it away. Chance to watch some of the movement by this Seattle defense. Kenny Easley, who had snuck all the way up into here, has now moved back on the outside. Here's Greg Gaines, the linebacker in those situations where they put the nickel and dime on the field. And watch it. Gaines will stay in, and at the last minute, he'll go in on the blitz. Grogan, feeling the pressure from the outside, had nowhere to go. Good coverage. Look at that excellent coverage by the Seattle defenders. Four on four. Camarillo averaged 44 a kick in the first half. He drills this one. Scancy at the 11. 30. And finally wrapped up at the 37. Greg Hawthorne made the tackle. That's the second outstanding kick return by Scancy. Greg looks to the sidelines to get those signals from Harris. There go the big bulls into the game. Third and short, two extra defensive linemen in. Fred Marion out. So they'll stack big bodies along the line of scrimmage. And notice they waited until the play had been sent in from the sideline before they sent the substitutes in on defense. Warner. Oh, what a play. Slashing in was Larry McGrew. Side linebackers to drop Warner for a loss and force Seattle to go for a field goal. The Seahawks are one for two today. Tremendous play. McGrew and Roland James, 38, in on the play. Anytime you go sideways in short yardage, you take some great risks because the runner does not have power. He's got to be square to the line of scrimmage. You see the celebration there as they really put the brakes on and. Another chance for a field goal by Seattle, but they were thinking touchdown, Dick, not field goal. 31 yards away if. Johnson's hit it. Oh, he's good from 31 and 32 yards after he missed earlier from 37. It's a one-point game. Rogan from his own 10-yard line. Tony Collins. Now let's go to NFL 85. The Rams lose for the third straight week. San Francisco trying to catch Los Angeles after that 8 0 start. It appears to be Irving Fryer that is injured. We at NBC Sports would like to wish one of our engineers well on his retirement. Tony Nell. Tony's been a joy to be around and this great talent uh, will be missed by all of us. Tony you took that football away and uh, may it take you to a lot of rainbows and sunsets. Next week. New England and the New York Jets will that be a battle for sole possession of first place Miami meanwhile will be at Buffalo San Diego plays Houston and Cincinnati and Cleveland battle in that AFC Central. Those are the early games. Late action features Denver at Los Angeles and Indianapolis will play Kansas City. While we still have a second Dick maybe we can go back and look at that statistic that we flashed up just briefly for you regarding the the kind of resurgence that this Seahawks defense has had early in the year they were having some problems they were this they were making some mistakes there's the number there are the numbers they were averaging giving up twenty eight point two per game in the first six games but look what they have been able to do in the last four games giving up just nine points a game and of course have only given up a touchdown so far here in this game they just stopped New England on the kickoff return at the 10 and on first down a loss of two. Seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. Tony Collins out to the 12 yard line where it'll be third down and a long nine. No snap count. 
Grogan went without the snap count on that play. They go on the move of the center right here. Big John Hanna, number 73, out in front of that play. Getting a little Toreador action from 53. Keith Butler, the linebacker. He goes back and tries to get a helmet on somebody else. I'll tell you, he's a tough football player. Big John. Boy, the lower body of Hanna. His thighs are 34 inches. My waist size is one of his thighs. Rogan and John Harris breaks it up intended for Cedric Jones. One of the things that John Hanna has to do as an offensive guard, when he's uncovered, when there's no one on top of him, he's got to drop back and look for the first dangerous man. You see him right here in the middle of your picture. Looks first to his right and then sees trouble to the left. That's Bryant, who looked like he was going to break away from Holloway. And Big John just put the helmet right to him. Well, that is a real, you can put the title on that one, Protector, John Hog Hanna. Time out. Working on the left leg of John Harris, but he did leave the field under his own power. You see, watch the back of the ankle. See the Cedric Jones, the receiver, falling on that ankle. Camarillo picking from deep in his own end. This one's fairly short. Midfield to Easley. 45-40. And another good return by the Seahawks. 15-16 yards for Easley. As Seattle comes on the field, a 7-6 game here. 38-yard punt, 16-yard return in the finals. The Bears big at Dallas, 44-0. First shutout against the Cowboys in 15 years. Miami wins at Indianapolis. Jets big, 62-28, so they're in first place at the moment. Pittsburgh, 30-7 at Houston. 24-14 winner. Philadelphia, the Eagles quietly on the plus side, 6-5. The Rams have lost three in a row. Upset at Atlanta. Cleveland beats Buffalo by 10. 38-14, the Green Bay a winner again, struggling New Orleans. And we'll give you the rest after this play. Trailing only 7-6, Seattle at the New England 35. It's Warner, a little misdirection, did not fool the Patriots. A flag is down as well as Larry McGrew spearheaded the defensive charge. Number 56, Andre Tippett, so quick on that last play. <laughs> Dick, he's, I don't think I've ever seen a linebacker who could move more quickly than Tippett. Wait for the officials. Holding number 85, offense, first down. That's Dan Ross, former Cincinnati Bengal. You hear the call being made. You saw a tip at number 56 going the wrong way, but you get a feeling for how quickly he can get in there and disrupt things from the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. penalty in this game puts Craig in a first and 20 hole at the 45 of New England goes to the sidelines to Charlie Young is tight end incomplete let's uh, finish up the scoreboard San Diego still leading at Denver in the third San Francisco apparently is going to win at home against the Chiefs another team struggling Last we heard it was 6-3 down in Los Angeles. The Raiders now at 6-all. The Bengals have just tied it in the third period. All field goals in Detroit, apparently a winner against Minnesota at home. New England not a big blitzing team on second and 20. Let's see if they gamble. Craig in the shotgun. And down he goes at the 49-yard line. It was Tippett, but Veris, the rookie, did a good job of flushing him out of the pocket, and Tippett will get the sack. Minus three yards for Tippett, his 11th sack of the year. Line stunt inside. Both of these linemen will be going outside, and this Veris will come all the way around from the top to get in on the action. Watch the play now as we turn it loose. Craig is going to have to fight for his life. Player coming all the way around. He doesn't get there the first time, but gets up and gets back to get a piece of it. Now, some wild action on the line of scrimmage. So third and long for Craig, who goes deep down the middle to Larson. Oh, my. Larson is there again. And a first down at the 21.
so much of the combination between receiver and quarterback is confidence. And look at the way Largent moves to get that time. Knew when that ball would be delivered, working against the fine coverage man in Raymond Claiborne, 26, but Largent forced him to the outside, made him turn, and then cut back to catch that football. They needed 23, they got 28. First down at the 21, and infield goal range with a score 7-6 New England, four and a half minutes remaining third quarter. Craig to Warner. Good for about eight more. Ronnie Lippett made the tackle. Warner starting that play on the wing rather than in the backfield, going in motion and finding some space over on the right-hand side. Craig just got in the ball quickly, and they're able to get down within about a yard and a half of a first down. Much better job by the Seattle offense here in the second half. Yeah, they're driving deep toward a possible go-ahead score. Larson goes out, and Seattle uses the two tight ends, Ross and Young, bookend the line. Turner broken up by Ronnie Lippett. Turner in quest of his 11th touchdown catch of the year, but Lippett a good job on defense. Timing pattern. Almost the old alley oop pass as they tried to throw it high, but Lippett showing us good athletic ability was right up there with Daryl Turner. Ball, as you see, way up on top, and he's giving some size, probably four or five inches, four inches anyway. Good jumping ability. Looked like Turner should have caught the ball. It was right there in both mitts. Third and a long one. Eric Lane. 15 10. Out of bounds at the five. First and goal, Seattle. Put on your helmet. You can feel like you're a part of the action here. Eric Lane circling out of that backfield. Almost lost his balance, able to get his feet underneath him. And we mentioned earlier, he's the number three fullback. Not high, I'm sure, on the priority list of people to stop for this New England Patriot defense. But boy, you can't overlook anybody. Seattle taking advantage, getting down inside the five-yard line. Lester Williams comes in. To bulk up that front line, and Marion is out on first and goal. Greg. Oh, my. It's like two semis colliding on the near sidelines. There must have been eight men involved in that scramble. I'll tell you, that's not a play you want to run very often when your backup quarterback is a rookie who has played very, very little. I think, though, that that's the toughest play to defense down on the goal line. When the quarterback can run or pass, he forces the defensive backs to stay back, gets an extra blocker into the pattern. Craig picking up, oh, about a yard and a half, almost two yards. They're almost uh, down to the three-yard line. Dick. Ball just inside the three on second and goal. Fake to Warner. Craig's going to run again. takes it himself to the outside. Charlie Lee Young, 87, getting a good block. But there is the critical block from the inside, 65, Ed Bailey. And they can't catch up. 55, Blackman, 26, Claiborne. You see Craig celebrating as he knows he's punched it into the end zone. Johnson adds the extra point in the first time today in Seattle. The home team is in the lead. With three minutes, 27 seconds left in the third quarter, it's the Seahawks by six. There's the big block by Bailey. And, of course, there is Craig knowing where that touchdown was. Oh, it looked awfully close to having a knee on the ground. But the official who was right on the spot says no. He got the football over the line and got a touchdown. 
They went 35 yards in eight plays, and the key play was third and 23 when Craig found Steve Largent over the middle for 28 yards. And instead of a long field goal, Craig and the Seahawks marched in for the seven. That'll turn Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator for the Patriots, hair even whiter. You figure when you've got them third and 23, but you've got them locked up. Well, they got off the hook, Craig. and they got into the end zone. Now after leading 7-0, Fryer scoring on the first play of the second quarter. The Patriot touchdown, a field goal by Johnson, and another Johnson field goal and a touchdown here in the third period to give the Seahawks the 13-7 lead. Down the middle towards Starry. Starring close to the 25-yard line, Merriman again with a tackle, number 51. Dave Craig on the phones. Most valuable headhunter, offensive line, or uh, special teams player in the AFC last year, number 50, Fred Young, right in the middle of your screen. They've taken him off a couple of the special teams because he's starting. But they don't take him off the coverage teams, and that's the reason. He gets to the football, didn't make the tackle, but did throw starring off balance with that first arm around it. Steve Grogan has missed on his last seven pass attempts. Little flanker screen to Cedric Jones, who picks up good yardage out to the 41-yard line and a first down. If we could keep an eye on Kenny Easley, they're really doing a lot of jumping around in there. On that last play, Easley had gone all the way up to the line of scrimmage. And about the time they snapped the ball, he's bailing out of there, trying to confuse Grogan. There he is, backing out of there, right in the middle of your screen, number 45. And what they're trying to do is to create some confusion for Grogan. They go up on the line, show him one thing, and then about the time that he get his audible, gets his audibles out, they bail out on him. Easley is up on the, well, just the bottom of your picture. There he is. He's coming this time. Incomplete, and it was Easley's pressure that forced that pass to the ground. And on the last play, Easley had come up to that position and had bailed out. Here he comes to the same position, and in comes inside. Tony Collins, 33, trying to pick him up. But again, the deep drop by Grogan gets him in trouble as easily is able to just go around to the outside and get to the quarterback. But what a rich pick that was for the Seahawks in 81. George Rogers was the number one player that year. Then Lawrence Taylor, Freeman McNeil third, and Kenny Easley fourth. Well, they've all proved uh, quality players. Whoops. Looked as if Schultz was offside, 58. Down the middle to Ramsey. Broken up by Paul Moyer and Easley. Now there's Easley, 50 yards downfield to help break up the pass. But I believe Schultz was offside. Well, we mentioned impact players. Look at the ground he will cover as he tries to stay offside. with Derrick Ramsey. Number 58, one -on -one defense, cover. second down. All for naught as New England will get the five on the penalty and bring up second and five at their own 46. But of course, if that pass had been caught, they could have waved the flag away and taken the catch. Well, you get an appreciation as you see the 49ers still leading Kansas City. The talent of Eastley, what a power player he is on defense. Never in the same spot. Disguises his intent so well. Now he's playing 10 yards back. James, fumble, and James was able to out-wrestle Fred Young for it. That's exactly what was going on on the ground, but again, the stripping of the ball, and these both of these teams practice that. One of the things that Raymond Berry said, he said, we went out to Denver, and they were always knocking the ball away, and he said, hey, we've got to do the same thing. Now they practice it. They go to work on that. Well, Raymond there looked like he's so low-key. It's almost as if he's just uh, getting ready to walk into the opera. He's got another 10 minutes. Boy, his mind is whirling. Big down here, third and two. Easily on the line of scrimmage. Here he comes. Complete to Derrick Ramsey. 40. And Ramsey out of bounds at the 36 with a first down. That's the kind of play I mentioned earlier. Grogan could see the blitz coming from the far side. Knew he was going to get leveled. 
He waited and waited until Ramsey came open. Got the football to him for the first down and then took the shot. Watch him now. You'll see it. Number 42 coming from the inside. It's kind of setting it up here, but watch Grogan. This is the thing that's so hard. 24, Terry Jackson is the man who came from the outside. Ramsey doing a good job of running with that football. Gets away from Greg Gaines. That's courageous quarterback. James right into the teeth of that defense for three. Was interesting on the previous play. Three defensive backs were blitzing for Seattle. Easley was coming, Jackson and Simpson. Three men all from that same side. Give you an idea of really how complicated that defense is for the quarterback to read. On that situation, that was three of the seven on the field. They were using seven DBs. Tom Catlin, of course, the man who puts that nickel package on the field, and it is a tough package to deal against. Second and seven. Flanker screen again to Jones. Read well by Dave Brown. Veteran from the University of Michigan. Brown, who is just one behind Donnie Schell as the active leader in interceptions. He has 42 career intercepts. Now third and eight after the yard loss. New England trailing 13 to 7. Half minute remaining, third quarter. Down the middle, intercept. Oh, Kenny Easley. A sure interception. He could just take a big bite out of that ball. Tremendous pressure on the line of scrimmage. Hannah trying to control there. Randy Edwards, 68, getting outside. Greg Gaines, the man who really decked Grogan. But Grogan able to get that pass off. Now let's go downfield and see what's happening there. It's Fryer who's trying to control the football. And easily will dream about that one tonight. Oh, my. The point of the ball hit it right between the four and the five. <laughs> Franklin to try a 51 yarder. Of course, he wants kick from 59. It's a fake. He's into Franklin. It doesn't work. A flag is down. Dante Scarnecchia. Special teams coach for the Patriots pulls one out of his pocket, but an alert Seattle defense would not allow it to work. But let's see what the flag is. Illegal use of the hands. Number 87, offense decline. First down, Seattle. That's as good as a turnover for the Seahawks as Raymond Berry tries the fake field goal. He has really been a gambler. Well, you know, for a very calm exterior and a very scientific kind of player, he has become a kind of a coach who's willing to take some risks. Won a big game with a flea flicker against Miami just a couple of weeks ago. Taking some risks here. And i got to tell you, Dick, I like that in a coach. Even when it doesn't work, it forces the defense to respect what you can do. And try to take field goal in four years, the Patriots. So first down, Seattle at their own 39. Warner. Julius Adams and Fred Marion collaborate and that will be the final play of the third quarter here at the Kingdom in Seattle 13 unanswered points by the hometown Seahawks it's 13 to 7 the pot of deux. two wins two losses two wins two losses then two wins they're trying to make it three in a row and break out of that pattern a six and four season second down six as we open this fourth quarter, 13 to 7 Seahawks. Craig, incomplete. Craig down, Sims with a hit. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, Dick in Denver. Turnover was good. They have a tie score, 14 all in the fourth quarter. A game certainly of interest to the fans here in the Northwest as. A Denver loss, Seattle win would move the Seahawks into a first place tie with the Broncos. 
New England, of course, needs a win to stay tied with the Jets in the East. Third and six for Craig. Deflected at the line of scrimmage. Scansy was open at the 47, but someone for New England up front able to bat that one awry. We can show it to you. It's Julius Adams right here at the bottom of your screen. He's just going to power inside. Won't make it all the way to the inside, but as he sees Craig go up to pass, the Wiley veteran, 37 years old, 14 years in the league. Look at that. Got that hand right up and snagged that football. You can see how wide open Scans he was. So instead of a first down, Adams forces Dave Fenzer and the punting team to come on for Seattle. Fryer at his own 21. No fair catch. And he is drilled by Paul Moyer. Today's game is brought to you by Hayes Microcomputer Products. Say yes to the future with Hayes. By Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Renault, European technology built in America. Make Renault the one to watch. Irving Fryer. <laughs> what it takes to be a punt returner, you have to be stupid and run fast. Well. <laughs> You might want to test your IQ after a hit like that from Paul Moyer. Well, you have to be courageous, too. He took some risks. Lucky. And I think talented just to hang on to that football. It has been Seattle's punt returning. One for 32, one for 25, another for 16 yards. A big part of the story. And they've kept Fryer in check. And so have they stopped Craig James. Who has had to work for his two or three yards, and that's about what he's been averaging, a little over three per carry. Let's go to Ahmad Rashad. No, apparently not. Raymond Berry, cool, calm, collected, as he was as a player. He just seemed so cerebral. He always seemed to be working two, three steps ahead. Second and seven. Actually, it's a shorter seven than it is an eight. James, nothing there. Jacob Green hauling him down. 21-14, Denver has scored twice in less than a minute, both on runs by Gene Lang. It's been a turnover mixed in there. Third and eight for Steve Grogan. Greg James has only 44 yards rushing, 13 tough chances. Irving Fryer to the 49-yard line in a first down, caught from behind by Terry Jackson. 26 more yards for Fryer. Oh, he's excited. Big play player, 80. Number Irving Fryer working on Jackson, as you indicated, Dick. And just gets, really gets him out of position. And Grogan able to find him and get him the football. Good play by Steve Grogan. And one of the things we talked about at halftime that has not happened, we felt that New England would come out and try and hammer this uh, Seattle defense. They have not been able to do that. Turnovers and Seattle's success offensively has taken that opportunity away from them. Lynn Dawson, the tight end, moving to the right side on first down at the 50. Craig James. And again. Three yards, and that's almost as if he runs into a stone wall once he gets that three-yard mark. Still trying to take advantage of those two giants on the left side of that offensive line. Holloway at six foot seven and 285 pounds. Hannah's about six, what, six three, six four, and about 200 and 275 pounds. No, I think 75 right now. <laughs> Second and seven. 13 to 7 the score Seattle leads. Rogan drills. Cedric Jones. First down at the 38. Dave Brown with a tackle. And the Patriots have four more downs as they try to take the lead. All right, Diggles in from four yards out. Denver takes the lead 21-14 there in the fourth quarter. That old turnover table. Denver using two of them to score. Two quick scores to rally from 14-7 down to go up by a touchdown. Here it's New England. Once leading 7-0, now trailing 13-7. And a first down. The flanker screen to Fryer this time. 
And the Fryer wrestled out of bounds by Kenny Easley after about a six yard play. One of the plays that you use to try and slow down the rush, try and cause those defensive linemen to think twice, is the screen play. Let them inside, but on that play, tremendous reaction and swift pursuit by the Seattle defense limited what could have been a big play. They mark it at the 31, so it's an eight-yard gain, second and two. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL and the Seattle Seahawks is prohibited. Tony Collins finds a hole and a first down at the 23. Tony Collins has not had the success in this year that he had back in 83 when they were running out of a two back set. Last year of course New England went to a one back set. It really wasn't Collins's cup of tea and he got discouraged. You saw him running out of the eye formation on that particular play and using the kind of success that put him all over a thousand yards back in 83. Back to only the third man in a Patriot uniform to rush for a thousand yards in the season. Sam uh, Cunningham and Jim Nance the others. Beautifully rainbowed by Grogan to his running back James and it's 13-13. Threw a wide receiver out there at Terry Jackson to take him out of the picture and then swung James. There's 81 starring who leads Jackson. You see 20 trying to get back into the picture. He wasn't able to do it. Number 58 Bruce Schultz left isolated on Craig James and James came up with the big catch. But you're absolutely right Dick. That's a finesse pass. You'll see it here. Grogan getting the ball and just soft, softly lofts it in there for the touchdown. Now the extra point for the lead. Is it good? No, he missed to the left. Tony Franklin, who had not missed an extra point in his two years with the Patriots. Six in a row with New England. He had had four in last four when he was with the Eagles, but hooked it to the left. And instead of a 14-13 lead, that almost, almost automatic extra point keeps this game in a tie. Adrenaline flowing for Franklin, who kicks it all the way to the goal line. Scancy breaks one tackle and then is nailed at the 20-yard line. Let's go back to the missed extra point. You'll get penetration in the middle of the line from number 72, Joe Nash, who breaks through right there and steps up, throws his hands up in the air. I think Franklin saw him coming through and maybe followed through a little too much. Just pull that ball off to the left and you know when they moved that goal post back from the from the goal line to the end line they really did put some more mystery into the game and that hurts Oh, it hurts to miss a, an extra point. Ten minutes and twenty five seconds remaining. Kurt Warner. Gain of five six yards a flag down. New England might have been offside. Blackman made the tackle. Well, with a missed extra point, let's not uh, overlook what Grogan did on that last drive. On a positive note, he was four for four and 66 yards. It is offside against the Patriots. And, of course, the touchdown pass of 29 yards or 23 yards to Craig James to culminate the 79-yard drive. Offside, number 55, defense, first down. Don Blackman, one of those two extremely large and active outside linebackers and you literally almost have two men who can play in the defensive line at those linebacking positions they get so physical in there they got a little eager on that one got across the line Craig a 500 pitcher today 15 for 30 still looking for a touchdown pass his streak 28 in a row Turner no he was not in bounds don't know if he caught it anyway. Craig, a little late in getting it to Turner. He had him open. He says, my fault. Patriot coaches over to offer some help to one of the officials. They felt that Walker was using his body, pushing the defender. They wanted a call for offensive interference on that last play. Second and five. Warner, Kenneth Sims, and Steve Nelson.
Nelson with a tackle just short of the first down at the 30. Steve Nelson, what a great player he is. Just tremendous anticipation. And one of those players that just has a marvelous sense for what's going to happen. Watch him here on the left side of your screen. And just before the ball is snapped, you'll see him sneaking over into here. He knew where that play was going to go. Watch him right there, just sliding across, gets himself in position where he cannot be blocked by Robert Pratt, and then gets back to get a piece of the tackle. Third and a short one. Warner, who else? First down. Boy, he was only a jersey shy of breaking that one for a touchdown. Well, what was it we said about the Patriot offensive line establishing control? Right now, it's the Seahawks offensive line. They're jamming up in the middle, just driving people off. And, of course, Warner, who's having, I think, his best game of the year, at least the best that I have seen him play, just exploding, continuing to make the big plays. There you see his number, six yards shy of 100. And 35 more catching the ball. Looking for Largent. There he is. 30, 20. Touchdown. A flag is down. And I believe they're going to call it back for holding. Yes. Oh, my. Does that hurt for the Seahawks? Sims number 77 and I think he's the guilty party at all oh, that's so tragic for Largent but an opportunity to just break it for a second let's go look at it it's such a good play I think one of the most Holy exciting plays in football number 78 offense first down Fred Marion actually comes in and knocks number 42 Lippett off the tackle now watch number 81 Daryl Turner who keeps Raymond Claiborne backing up until Largent can finally break to the inside. Well, a celebration, but it only lasted a, lasted a second. They'll bring it all the way back, carry it back 10 yards, and instead of standing in the end zone, Dave Craig will now line it up just outside of his own 25-yard line. That's a 75-yard play, 65 they don't get, and 10 for which they are penalized. And not only did Kreider get called for the penalty, but he went off the field. I don't know whether he's hurt. John Borchard, number 76, is coming in his place. First down and 20. Craig in traffic. 25, 30, and out of bounds at the 35. Andre Tippett, a flag is down. Uh, they grabbed the face mask on him, Dick. 10 yards plus for Craig and the Seahawks. That also carries the automatic first down. We have a face mask call. Number 56, defense, five-yard penalty. Right at the end of the run, Andre Tippett reaches out. You see him grab it right there. I'd be tempted to give him 15. Except he let go. As soon as he got it, he let go. Had he ridden him down with it, it would have been 15. And he realized he'd made the error, took his hand away. Ball at the 41-yard line. Where it will be second down and about five. Shows first down and five. Well, they can't give... They got to charge him with a carry, don't they? On first down. Should be second down. Maybe not. First and five is what it stands. Warner close to the first down at the 45. Yes, it doesn't matter where the foul uh, happens. If it happens during a play, even if after 30 yards downfield, it's still first down. So it is second down and they are. Now what they've done is to tack the penalty on to the end of the play and keep the down the same. So it is a costly penalty either way. Clock running under eight minutes left. Great Fourth opportunity, quarter. Dick, to gamble here. Perhaps... Uh, the Seahawks will show us a little gambling nature on this second yard to go. That's Byron Franklin to the bottom of your screen. We don't see him often. And ooh, Barris meets Warner head on, and Warner did not get the first down. Well, they probably wish they had gambled. They didn't make anything on the play, playing the conservative game. And left to his, to his ways, Chuck Knox is a very conservative coach. In fact, he sometimes rankles some of the local writers because they want him to be more flashy. He says it simply, I'd rather win 
And they certainly have done that successfully for him. Well, and he was your coach with the Rams. After five winning years, five playoff teams, he was fired because uh, he wasn't imaginative enough or creative enough or exciting enough. He only won. He said, what's wrong with that? Well, he didn't have any apologies to make. And you saw the stat. These Patriots, the toughest in the league on third down conversions. This one's going to be tough to stop. Only less than a yard to go. Warner. First down, fumbles. Was he down? He was down. It'll be a first down for the Seahawks. The fall to the carpet forced the fumble. When you see that runner coming and you know he's going to jump over the top, you've got to try and hit him in the air. Watch number 57, Steve Nelson. He levels himself in there, but Warner just goes up and over the top. You see him as he hits the ground. That ball comes loose, but they won't charge you with a fumble when you've hit the ground and the ball bounces loose. That gives Warner 100 yards for the day. That may have been the toughest yard of the day for him. Six and a half minutes remaining. 13-13 the score here in the fourth quarter. Play action for Craig. Here's Largent open again. Two more yards, Craig DeLargent. Number 80, Steve Largent, working again on Lippitt. Watch him, he gets him turned all the way around and then just loops back to the inside. I think he hypnotizes those defensive backs. He truly is an artist. Those wonderful feet, doesn't have the great speed, but knows how to get the defensive back at that critical point where the back must react. That's when he makes his cut. To give you a little insight into how important that 100 yards is rushing for the Seahawks. That's only the second time this year that the Patriot defense has given up 100 yards rushing to a runner. That's right. Kevin Mack of the Browns was the other. Craig looking for six. There's Larkin. Down to the 12-yard line. 19 more. Some great work inside by the Seattle offensive line. You'll see some pickups here that are just unbelievable. There, a shot by number 65, Ed Bailey on Nelson. Knocked him right off his feet. Gave the quarterback time to find Largen again. And look at that cushion. It didn't pay off that time. Claiborne likes to play his man loose and then accelerate to the ball. He played Largent a little too loosely on that play. Largent, one catch away from 600 in his magnificent, magnificent career. First down as the Seahawks give to Warner. They're about four for Six and a half minutes remaining. 13-13 the score here in the fourth quarter. Play action for Craig. Here's Largent open again. Two more yards, Craig DeLargent. Number 80, Steve Largent, working again on Lippitt. Watch him, he gets him turned all the way around and then just loops back to the inside. I think he hypnotizes those defensive backs. He truly is an artist. Those wonderful feet, doesn't have the great speed, but knows how to get the defensive back at that critical point where the back must react. That's when he makes his cut. It'll give you a little insight into how important that 100 yards is rushing for the Seahawks. That's only the second time this year that the Patriot defense has given up 100 yards rushing to a runner. That's right. Kevin Mack of the Browns was the other. Craig looking for six. There's Largent. Down to the 12-yard line. 19 more. Some great work inside by the Seattle offensive line. You'll see some pickups here that are just unbelievable. There, a shot by number 65, Ed Bailey on Nelson. Knocked him right off his feet. Gave the quarterback time to find Largent again. And look at that cushion. It didn't pay off that time. Claiborne likes to play his man loose and then accelerate to the ball. He played Largent a little too loosely on that play. Largent, one catch away from 600 in his magnificent, magnificent career. First down as the Seahawks give to Warner. For about four before McGrew can make the stop. Marion to help out. Good blocking inside. And Seattle's offensive line doing the hammering here. They're using Warner. They're using the clock, working down toward the goal line. Right now, things are getting tough in there for this 
New England defense. They're Raiders. almost back into their own end zone. Excuse me, Merlin. The Raiders have scored the first touchdown of that game down in Los Angeles. San Diego counters with a field goal to pull within four at Denver. This is the 11th play of the long drive. Warner trying to get outside. What an effort by Warner. And a flag is down. And Sims just picks it up daintily, tosses it aside as if it was against a man trying to block me. And that would be Bob Kreider. It's been a tough day for the expatriate. Especially difficult because you want to play well against the team that had traded you away. Kreider has had a fine career here in Seattle. Holding number 78, offense, second down. It was Kreider who held on the 65-yard touchdown that was called back earlier in this drive. You see it on the right-hand corner of your screen. There is Kreider. Well, just as at the last part of it. There he is. And that's just a good job of tackling on Sims. And Kreider grabbed his shoulder and his arm and took him to the ground. But it's a shame because you said it, Dick. That's a great job of running by Warner, who got away from two short tackles to gain some yardage on that play. Second down and 15 from the 17. Craig has Turner open at the 11. And he's out of bounds at the seven yard line. That'll bring up third down at about five. Daryl Turner, a touchdown maker. DT, Daryl Turner, but you can turn that around. He's been TD for Seattle with 10. That was his first catch today. Gilbert is used as a shield so that the opposing team can't see Harris's signals. I asked Chick Harris how complicated those signals were, how much information he could transmit. He said, I could write a letter <laughs> with these signals. Three and a half minutes remain. A big call on third and five. Craig deflected, intercepted by Marion. He might go all the way. He's got a whole crew of blockers. 40, 50, one man to beat. It's Warner. Out of bounds at the 15, Fred Marion. Oh, my. Talk about a turnabout of emotions in Seattle from near touchdown to interception return of 83 yards for Marion. These New England Patriots just come up again with these late-game heroics. That ball batted up into the air, and that's the old tip drill. Fred Marion, who's... He's really got a half a tank. Into his own. <laughs> half a tank here. Now it's down to a quarter. Great block there. Several fine blocks. Blair Bush trying to run him down. But the last man, and it has to be a sure tackle, Kurt Warner. And now Seattle's defense back into the game. For a second, it looked like it was going to be the, the New England defense that had the last chance. It's on empty. Marion's second interception, both right at the goal line in this game. The other one started the drive to New England's first touchdown. So from 13 all and Seattle one touchdown called back and another penalty after they've gotten inside the five Marion gives the Patriots a ball at the other 15. Craig James for two. New England trying to gain the lead with three minutes left. Let's go to NFL 85. All right, Dick, a bit of excitement in Los Angeles. The Raiders go ahead of Cincinnati on this seven-yard touchdown catch by Marcus Allen from Mark Wilson. They're in the fourth quarter. The score is 13-6 Raiders. And here, New England tied with Seattle with 2.51 left. Seattle had the ball for over seven minutes, scored once, had a call back. We're near scoring again. Come up empty. Rogan over the middle to Fryer. Touchdown, New England. Irving Fryer, second touchdown of the game, and the Patriots in a matter of seconds. It goes from Seattle's fans looking for a go-ahead score to Fryer putting New England in front. The opportunity delivered by the interception and by the defense 
and Fryer and Grogan know how to take advantage of it. Pressure from 45, Kenny Easley, but he gets there too late as Grogan able to spot Fryer cutting to the inside on a post pattern and get him the football for the TD. Franklin, after missing his last point after, has this one down the center. Two minutes and 39 seconds remain. Seattle will have the ball when we return. Patriot defense loves that man. Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator. He's got to be breathing a lot easier right now. The pressure will be on his defense as the kick is short. Comes down at the 16 to Scancy, and he's toppled at the 26. Meanwhile, Fred Marion was the AFC defensive player of the week last week he might be going for back to back honors the deflected pass Eric Lane was there an 83 yard return by Marion to set up the touchdown he has two interceptions today 115 yards on his returns he's the leading ground gainer for either side tremendous play by the New England defense but they're right back on the field now and with two minutes and 33 seconds to go in this game Craig knows he's got time to work with and I think he has all three timeouts too Dick he does a long ways to go 75 yards away 28 straight games Craig has thrown a touchdown pass whoops a mix up so neither receiver goes Craig to Largent and that is his 600th career catch a man on his way to the Hall of Fame no one in the history of this game has caught 600 in less than 12 years Largent has done it in less than 10 an ordinary play for most of these fans congratulations I guess those are those that just uh, finished their degree of course congratulations on the newborn baby Steve Largent uh, wife Terry, a uh, baby Kramer, nine pounds, born last Monday. So proud papa and records all in the same week. Craig Kramer James, he named uh, him after Jim Zorn, the middle name. Lane batted away by Lippett. That was a second and one throw. So now third down and one for Seattle with 222 left. Dangerously close to an interception on that play as. Eric Lane kept backing up on that ball. When you've got defenders who can see that ball thrown, you can't afford to give them that opportunity to get up and take it away from you. 222, you see the clock as it counts down in this crucial contest between these two teams. With Denver apparently winning in their game, the Seahawks are looking at the possibility of being two games out if they don't win here. Third and one. Quarterback draw. And a first down at about the 43. That might take us up to the two minute warning. Smart play by Craig, who's called a timeout quickly to get another play in. So they will have two remaining as we welcome those of you who have been watching the action from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Raiders and the Cincinnati Bengals. Here. In Seattle's kingdom, the New England Patriots and a tremendous turnabout here late in the fourth quarter. Tied at 13 when Tony Franklin missed the extra point that would have given New England the lead at 14-13. You see the final, the Raiders beating Cincinnati 13-6. Then New England found Seattle driving downfield. A 65-yard touchdown pass from Grogan to his receiver, Steve Largent, was called back on a penalty. Seattle still marched inside the five yard line another Kreider penalty and then a pass was intercepted at the goal line by Fred Marion he returned at 83 yards all the way to the Seattle 15 and uh, at that point Grogan fired a touchdown throw to Irving Fryer and thereby the lead at 20 to 13. The Funky Brewster program will follow football coverage. In addition, all remaining NBC Network evening programs will also be seen over most of these stations, except for Pacific Time Zone and some Mountain Time Zone stations where the programs will be seen at their regular time. So we hope you'll stay with us here on the Peacock. Big lineup again on Sunday night. Now after New England took the lead and the turnabout on the interception by Marion when it appeared Seattle would score now it's up to the Seahawks with two minutes 15 seconds left they have a first down at their own 44 and two timeouts left. 
Craig deep down the middle to Turner. Make it Byron Walker, 89, at the 10 yard line, just missed. One man who's done his share of running today, number 31, Fred Marion. Walker, a speedster, just a straight up, and that ball perfectly thrown. You've got to be able to catch that bomb. It looked like Walker just kind of let his feet go out from underneath him. Not a great deal of experience as a pass receiver in the NFL, but oh, you've got to catch those when they're thrown that perfectly. So on first down, Chuck Knox and the Seahawks go for the bundle. Second and 10 at the 44. Two minutes, nine seconds left. Larchett, who has 600 catches in his career. With eight today is to the right. Walker and Scancy to the left. Full blitz. Incomplete. He was looking for Scancy trying to come back, and Craig had to dump it off. Ken Sims had moved over to the right tackle position. They put Andre Tippett down in the left tackle position. Three point stance, and it was Sims from the right side who was there to force Craig to throw that football early. The result, an incompletion. I think he just actually threw it away with maybe with the hope that Largent would read his mind and get there more quickly. But they've got a third and third and ten now. And I think they can they really will take four downs here. There's no sense kicking the ball away with only 204 left on the clock. Triple right formation on third and ten. And down he goes, McGrew. Ferris, the rookie, Garen Ferris, his second sack of the day, the kid from Stanford, and that's the two-minute timeout. The New England Patriots looking for a victory that would be their sixth in a row, one shy of their all-time longest winning skein, have a touchdown lead, and Seattle in a fourth and ten hole with two minutes left. And what will Chuck Knox do from his own 30? Well, actually, it's fourth and uh, longer than ten, fourth and about uh, 22. The other is finals today. The Bears have already clinched a playoff spot with their victory today. And you see all the rest of the results. Jets scored 62. Pittsburgh now in sole possession of first place in the AFC Central. Philadelphia keeps surprising. Rams have lost three in a row. Cleveland still in the thick of that Central. Green Bay big over New Orleans. I can't believe this. They've sent the punting team onto the field. Two minutes to go in the game. Do you believe they're going to punt it? Well, maybe with that kind of yardage, Knox figures he can kick it down there and work for the takeaway. Yeah, with two timeouts left, he won't have much time, even if he's perfect defensively. Irving Fryer, fair catches at the 34. Fryer with two touchdowns today, one of the New England stars. San Diego has taken the lead at Denver, 24-21 in the fourth quarter. San Francisco, an apparent winner against Kansas City at home. Brogan taking his instructions, and you better believe that they're talking about eating up that clock. They need one first down. Of course, Seattle will be calling the timeouts and will be going to try and force the turnover. Knox, in essence, is saying, I've got more confidence in my defense that I have in my offense in a third and very, very long situation. Two timeouts that will be spent immediately. A first down by New England would seal the win. Craig James protecting the football. We welcome those of you who have seen the 49ers defeat the Kansas City Chiefs. As the 49ers move within two games of the Rams, who have lost for the third straight week. It's Dick Enberg and Merlin Olsen. Today, in his five games, all five wins with 19 for 24 passing in the fourth quarter. Two touchdowns, no interceptions, and he hasn't hurt himself today. Short gain again by the Patriots. Tony Collins for a couple. Timeout, and that's the last one for Seattle. 145 remain. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman, the coordinating producer of NBC Football, Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by Richard Klein. NFL 85, produced by John J. Filippelli and directed by Bucky Guns. Technical directors are Thieveridge and Salvatore Nagita. 
right, congratulations. Uh, John Filippelli on NFL 85 bringing the commissioner of football, Pete Rosal, in to start off our coverage today. Another big day. This is the 11th week of the season. New England trying to stay in a first place tie with the Jets, a team they'll meet next Sunday at Giant Stadium. And uh, a roar from the crowd here. San Diego has gone ahead of Denver. That one being announced. That would keep uh, Seattle close. Well, they don't want to be close. They want to be on top. Here's the stat that we'd like to show you that is very interesting. Grogan has been in there for five games, started four of those five, and look how he's scored by quarter. It's that fourth quarter where he's had his best football, and they've come from behind in several games. And of course, they came from behind again today. Their defense, down close to their own goal line, came up with a big interception, and Grogan took advantage, went to Fryer for the big touchdown that put them out in front. Had a ball, the uh, scores in those first three quarters, they don't equal what he's done in the fourth. Dave Craig hoping he gets another chance. Grogan just protecting the football. Brings up fourth down, and the clock will run now. And of course, you'll watch Seattle try to jump off the pile and get on their side of the scrimmage line. So the there, there's the mark by the referee, uh, Mark Bright. And 30 seconds from the time he drops that right hand. So there'll be about a minute left if the uh, Patriots let the clock run all the way to a five yard penalty. Now, do you try and block this punt? There are 10 men up. And Seattle, of course, is one of the teams in the league that has had good success over the past few years at blocking kicks. Camarillo, by the way, a little bit slow in his kicking, although I'm sure he's well aware of Seattle's record, too. They do take the delay of game. 103. Five yard penalty. And Scancy. Who has had some good returns today. Seattle has really shined in that department. But Craig really in a tough spot, Merle Olson, because when he does come on the field, he has no timeouts to work with. Now, this is the kind of situation that a special teams coach like Dante Scarnecchia has to spend a lot of time working on. Tremendous pressure on Camarillo and on every one of those people trying to protect him on the line of scrimmage. Ten men up there for Seattle. Delivers a good kick. Scancy naked back at the 20. Down at the 28. So 72 yards away, the Seahawks with 52 seconds remaining. 47 yard punt, 8 yard return. Tempers flaring a little bit on the line as the officials try and get people separated down there. Ed Reynolds, number 95. One of the people involved in that. Craig will be out quickly, and you better believe he's got a lot of plays called, maybe three or four plays in series. They'll try and get it down the field as quickly as possible. 52 seconds on the clock. New England scored first on the first play of the second quarter. Irving Fryer, an eight-yard reverse, 7-3 at the half, then 7-6 in the third quarter before Craig rolled around his own left end to give Seattle its first lead, 13-7 late in the third. Grogan to James, 23 yards tied it. Extra point was missed. And then Grogan to Fryer, 13 yards for the 2013 lead. Craig deep down the middle. Daryl Turner never looked for the ball. But right by his helmet. You've got to know when that ball is going to be thrown. Here's Turner. Watch how close to him this ball is thrown. McSwain puts a hand up, gets a finger on it, and Turner who is obviously going straight up the field with all the speed he can muster, unaware that that football was even there. It's an interesting call, though, with the Patriots probably thinking sidelines, and they went right down the middle for it all. A courageous call, but a disaster in a sense that you've got to have a receiver down there who knows when the football is going to arrive. Second and ten with 47 seconds left. Tippett, his second sack today, his 12th of the season. The all-pro linebacker for the Patriots. Came into this game as the leading sacker in the AFC. He won't hurt his cause with that sack. And, of course, pins the Seahawks even further into their own territory. Oh, how many plays do you have for this kind of yardage in your book? And the clock running, and the Seahawks rather casual about getting back into the huddle with wide receivers. 
Third and 22. Craig needs something big. Turner comes down and then fumbles. And they call it incomplete. That would have been good enough for the first down. Instead, it'll be fourth and 22. The New England Patriots. A young team two years ago, this club was the second youngest in the entire NFL, second only to the Colts. And in the two years since 83, and apparently this is the time that they have ripened beautifully. Six straight wins are looking for. Well, I've got a 24 all tie in Denver in the four. Oh, what a showdown. Apparently, this will set up against the Jets next Sunday. Do or die for Craig. It's going to be intercepted by Roland James at the 43 yard line. Clock stops on change of possession. Eight seconds remain. And the Patriots can now show open celebration. Now the Patriots defense responding again. Jimmy Carr, the defensive backfield coach. And Don Schenick, who coaches the linebackers. Eddie Kayat coaching those defensive linemen, along with the defensive coordinator, Rod Rust, have to be terribly proud of what their defense did today under tremendous pressure, able to get that last opportunity, not only for the offense to score, but put them way down in great field position. And then, of course, Raymond Berry's quarterback, Steve Grogan, taking advantage of that chance to put it in the end zone. So Dave Craig, second longest streak in NFL history, 28 straight games with a touchdown. Johnny Unitas 47 way off by himself in that regard. But Craig's streak ends today as the New England Patriots shut him out in the passing touchdown department. And it's New England still in first place as they beat Chuck Knox's Seahawks 20 to 13. With Merlin Olson, this is Dick Enberg. Thank you for being with us at the Kingdom in Seattle where New England stays in first place.